Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stav and this is She Equips Herself and this is Mac. We're here at the range today because we've gotten some requests to do a video on malfunctions. I did a video on going to the range alone and one of the main reasons why some of you ladies were afraid of going to the range by yourselves is because you don't know what to do if you have a malfunction. So today we're gonna show you what to do so that hopefully you can feel a little more confident the next time you go to the range. yet please hit that subscribe button if you like what you see here today and hit the like button as well if you like this video hey everyone I'm uh, assisting Stav today and I just wanted to tell you just real briefly about myself just so you kind of know where I'm coming from I've been teaching firearms now for a little over 20 years I started in the Marine Corps being a range coach and a primary martial chip instructor or a PMI and then I became a police officer and I've been teaching firearms for the police department for about 16 years now and I've been teaching civilians for the last 12 years. I've run a lot of ranges and I've seen a lot of things What me and Stav both want to go over because she's run a lot of ranges with me and what we see all the time we see it over and over and over are some very basic malfunctions that are not necessarily the gun's fault. In fact more often it's the shooter's fault than it is the gun. We're not going to do this in a technical way we're just going to do it as just a basic explanation, so we're not going to use fancy names or anything like that. We're just going to tell you what happens, why it happens, and how to fix it if it does happen. We're talking about you want the gun to shoot. You want it to go bang, and it won't. That's the basic malfunction. There's a lot of different reasons it's not going to go bang, but you pulled the trigger, and it didn't go bang, and now we have to fix whatever the problem is. So the number one reason that I see, and this goes through everything, police, marines, civilians, when it comes to pistols, the number one reason that I have malfunctions on the range is because the shooter did not properly load the firearm. And it happens in two separate reasons. Number one, the shooter doesn't load the gun right and there's no bullet in the chamber, or the shooter doesn't load the gun right and the gun doesn't go fully into battery. So I'm going to cover both of those with you right now. The number one malfunction that I see on the range is a failure to load the firearm properly. Students or shooters will have a malfunction on the very first round. And this would be a huge problem in a self-defense situation, but I see it all the time. Couple reasons why. All right. Number one, when people take their firearm, just so you know, this is empty and I'm going to be using dummy rounds for what I'm about to explain. Okay. A lot of times people's slide will be forward and I will tell them Go ahead and load. So a lot of times, people will screw up when they first load the magazine. Put the magazine and they pull the slide to the rear and they let it go. They don't pull it far enough to the rear. So when they come out for their first shot, they get a click and not a bang. That's a problem. So they had never fully loaded that firearm. Another thing that happens is sometimes when people have their slide to the rear and their slide stop people, and I myself am a slide stop man. I use my slide stop. I don't slingshot stop rule as a slingshot person. Either way, as long as you're very consistent, you do it, uh, is, people like one, people like the other, whatever, as long as the gun's reliable and shooting good. But one thing that can happen is when you're a slide stop person and you put the magazine in, when the magazine's not quite fully inserted, but it's on its way, you might be a little over eager and you're trying to be fast and you hit the slide stop and then, and it, and it actually, when you're doing it fast, it's almost like impossible to know, but I set my slide forward with my slide stop before my magazine was fully inserted and they get a click instead of a bang. That happens all the time. It's a failure to make that firearm completely ready and there's no round in the chamber, all right? Not pulling the slide all the way to the rear, sending the slide forward before the actual magazine is fully inserted will cause a malfunction all the time. If you should experience a malfunction like that, all right, so you, I'm just gonna put it around in the chamber right now, and it's again, it's a dummy round, but if I had come out of the holster and I go down on the target and I go, and I get a click. What I know or what I felt, and again, under combat stress, you might not even know any of this because you might be so in tune with the fight going on, but I got a click. If I looked at my gun, I know that my gun is fully in battery. I could see it, but it still didn't fire. Simple solution. You tap the magazine to make sure it's fully inserted. You pull the slide to the rear, and now you're back in action. Now you saw, hopefully you saw, the dummy round came flying out of my gun because that is showing me that I pulled it completely to the rear to eject the spent casing and then to feed the next round. So I now know that I'm ready to go. Now, if I had loaded my gun properly and I got the same malfunction, I pull the trigger and I got a click and not a bang, maybe it's a bad primer. Maybe it's a bad bullet. Maybe 
it's just not gonna fire. It was loaded incorrectly at the factory, or you're a reloader and you loaded it incorrectly. I know that I just ejected the bad bullet and put a new bullet in. So tap, cycle, and you're ready to go. That's a simple clearing of all types of malfunctions where you actually have the gun in battery, you pull the trigger and got a click and the gun didn't go bang. Right. That is a very simple solution. Another problem that we see all the time is an operator error, someone kind of messing up their own gun, and that's having your hand on the gun when the slide goes forward. What I mean by that is there is a spring right here. It wraps around this guide rod and there's a spring. It's currently compressed and that's what's gonna send this forward when I hit the slides up. It's a powerful spring and it has enough pressure to send that slide forward, feed the round correctly, and make it work almost every single time. Semi-automatics are well made. They're, generally speaking, you have a decent gun, it's gonna work almost every other time, every time, as long as you don't screw it up. But one thing that happens all the time, I don't think I've ever taught a class where I haven't seen this at least once, is people will do this, okay? They'll put their magazine in, and they'll pull this slide to the rear, and they'll do this. Now, I don't know if you noticed what I did wrong there, but your hand should never be on the slide when it's going forward. That spring, knows exactly what it is supposed to do. It knows its job better than you know your job. Its only job is to send the slide forward with the correct amount of pressure to load this firearm correctly, whether you're shooting it or whether you're just loading it. It knows exactly what it's going to do. What it does not know is how much you're going to screw it up by holding onto the slide. Never hold the slide when it's going forward. You always pull the slide to the rear, all the way to the rear, and let it go forward on its own. All right, so when you load, it should be something like this. And you saw it went forward. Or maybe something like this. And I'm just doing this now. If you left front serrations and you like them, it should be something like this. Every time the slide goes forward, it should go forward free of human contact. A lot of times I see people do this, and then when they go slide forward, it gets hung up like that. If your gun is super clean, and you try to do, do this, it still might not malfunction. You still might be totally fine. But as you shoot, and if you don't have a perfectly clean gun, this can happen. You do this, and when you go forward, it hangs up like right about there. And I'm holding it to make sure it hangs up because I feel like it's not gonna, I know I cleaned this gun recently, but you'll see that it will stay out of battery just like that. And you can see how it's just barely out of battery. Now, if you notice, I'm pulling the trigger, it's not going click. As soon as you get the gun even a little bit out of battery, it won't go click. Now watch as I let go. You know it clicked. So a lot of times when people load and they go forward, they're not allowing that thing to fully go and you can see it that much out of battery and it won't go bang. Push it and it will. I see it all the time. And that is poor loading. That is someone who's just basically loading their gun incorrectly. Let go of that slide every single time. Every single time and you will have way fewer malfunctions on your first shot. Here's what I did just a minute ago while we were preparing to go live here. I loaded Stavrula's magazine. She doesn't know what's in it, but I'll tell you guys, there's a bunch of live rounds and a bunch of dummy rounds in her magazine. So if she should bump into a malfunction, then she's going to tap the magazine, cycle the weapon, and then decide if she's gonna fire. She's gonna do this, just the drill we're gonna do is just another, it's just one of those drills that I don't think you ever do too often, is stepping to the left, stepping to the right, drawing from your holster, coming out, and delivering multiple rounds. So I'm just gonna basically tell her how many rounds I want fired. I'll say, fire, she'll step to the left or to the right, come out, pull the trigger, maybe she gets a bang, maybe she gets a click, she'll fix it and continue the drill. All right, here we go. Stepping left, two rounds. Stepping left, two rounds. Ready? Fire! Stop! Scan and holster. Stepping right, two rounds. Stepping right, two rounds. Ready? Fire! Stepping left, three rounds. Stepping left, three rounds. Ready, fire. Stop. Excellent. All right, guys, I'm just gonna pick you up, go down range, just because she always shoots so good. I hate to, I hate to brag, but I guess I'm bragging for her, so it's okay.
always shooting well. All right, coming back. Now, guys, I'm going to add something to this, too. What Stav was doing is she was doing a tap cycle. So she finds that with her hands, it works best for her to grip the slide like this. And then basically, she does kind of a pull to the back and a punch forward at the same time. So it looks kind of like this. And I think that's a very good way to cycle the weapon. However, there are other ways that also work really well. And there's a lot of instructors out there that really think it's best if you invert your gun. So let's go like this. Tap and you invert your gun. So it's like this, and you do that. And the reason why is you just have a little bit of added benefit of gravity, helping the bullet or that problem to fall out. So it would look like this, and you go forward. The problem is, on a small gun, it's hard to get a good grasp. On a full size, like police officer, duty firearm, or military large scale handgun, it's, you have, it's easy to grab. But on these narrow firearms, it's sometimes hard to get a good purchase on the gun. To do that someone might say oh you should flip it upside down yeah you might you might want to flip it upside down but if you get a better grip on the gun and you're more consistent just doing that i find that still works really well for clearing malfunction i am in agreement with something like that i don't think it's a problem but your hands are your hands and they may work better one way than another way and i don't think the upside down is so beneficial that it takes the place of a proper racking of the slide if you hear about the inverted thing try it if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, the waist out ruler does it, perfect. No problem there. I'm in full of We're all set. All right, guys. So there's another type of malfunction that occurs relatively frequently, and it's called a stovepipe. So what happens here is you pull the trigger, and the gun goes bang. And as the slide comes back, and it's trying to eject that spent casing, it doesn't fully clear the firearm. The slide goes forward and picks up the next round. And if you look in there, you can see the next round is starting to feed, but it slams in on that empty casing and it sticks up and it's called a stovepipe because it's kind of sticking in the air. Well, there's several different ways you can clear this malfunction. One of the ways you can clear this malfunction, and I don't 100% agree with this, but I certainly don't disagree with it, is all you gotta do is come over the top and give it like a kung fu chop. Because once I hit this casing, it's going to knock the spent casing out of the way and chamber my next round so I'm ready to go. So imagine that I was just shooting. I could see the stovepipe. I know there's a problem. It's not shooting. I just give it a kung fu. And now I can just go and I hit it. It's a very, very, very fast way to clear a stovepipe. There are going to be some people that will disagree with that style of clearing, but it's hard to argue with what works. And I've seen that work many times during competitive stuff, and it's a very fast malfunction clear. So I can't disagree that it works, and you saw it work, so there's one way. Let's do another way. So here we are, another stovepipe, similar situation. I'm trying to shoot, it's not gonna shoot. I'm gonna do the tap cycle. It cleared the malfunction. I'm ready to shoot. So I'm good to go on the shot. However, one thing that occurred, when you clear a malfunction that way, you also eject the next round which was feeding. So I have a live round right over here. This came out of the gun because the tap cycle took both the spent casing, the stovepipe, and the next round and threw them both away. Now if I had a 17 round mag, probably not a big deal. But if I'm running a single stack nine millimeter, because that's what a lot of people carry, losing one round, you don't have a lot of rounds to lose. So. You don't have that problem when you do the Kung Fu chop. You do have that problem when you tap cycle. But I think that a lot of people in the self-defense field would tell you, and I don't necessarily agree with this, but would tell you it's more reliable to tap cycle. And the truth is, I don't know if it's more reliable as far as the function of the gun. I believe it's more reliable as far as what the shooter can do under stress. Because a tap cycle is going to clear a lot of problems for you. So if it's in your mind that if it doesn't go bang, I tap cycle, you're probably in good shape mentally because you're gonna have the bad bullet, you're gonna clear that. You're gonna have the, I didn't put a bullet in the chamber, you're gonna clear that. You're gonna have the stovepipe, you're gonna clear that. You're gonna clear a lot of different malfunctions with a tap cycle. So it doesn't, you don't have to necessarily master the, the Kung Fu chop and the tap cycle, you just run tap cycle, your brain might work really bad under stress, so it's like one fix for a lot of problems, and that is a good thing. So although mechanically I wouldn't say it works any better, in fact, I would say it works worse. You're a human being and under high stress, you're gonna do all sorts of dumb stuff. So it might be better to just learn the tap and cycle, but you should know how everything works so you can make a decision on how you wanna do it. 
All right, so now we're gonna go over a double feed, and I wanna show you how to make it so you can duplicate this at the range and practice. First thing is I have some live rounds, they're in the magazine, then I have a dummy round. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point my firearm down to the ground, and I'm gonna drop my dummy round directly into the chamber of the firearm. So see if you can see that. I've put the dummy round into the chamber. Now don't forget that gravity is a real thing, because a lot of people will do that, and then stick the gun up, and the, gra the dummy round falls right up. Keep it pointed down, and now I'm gonna insert my live rounds, and I'm gonna send the slide forward. There is pressure from the live round pushing into the dummy round, and that's the situation I have here. So if I were to try to shoot this gun, I don't get a click, because the gun's not in battery. I just, I might even think I'm out of ammunition, because it looks like I'm out of ammunition, but I'm not. I have a double feed. Now if I try to do a tap rack, nothing changes. Nothing changes. Now a lot of people will tell you, no matter what your malfunction is, your first step is always tap cycle because it clears so many malfunctions. I'm not in disagreement with that. That might be a very good way to train. But if you become aware that you have a double feed, you're shooting, it doesn't go bang. You try a tap cycle and then you look and you go, ah, I have a double feed. This might be a really good time to start running. Because <laughs> right? this takes a few seconds. You don't want to be a stationary target. If you realize you have a double feed, you're on your horse, you're boogieing behind cover or just to get out of the area. It's not good to stand still while people are trying to kill you and fix a double feed. But when you get to behind cover or you get to a safer spot, the way that you fix a dummy or double feed, you have a couple different options. People might argue about which one's better. And I think this is more gun related than shooter related. But one way to fix this, one way, is to lock the slide to the rear. So I pushed up on my slide stop and I locked the slide to the rear. Now every time I teach this malfunction clearing, people have trouble, especially when going fast, locking the slide to the rear. Dov has assisted many students in learning how to lock the slide to the rear because a lot of people have trouble locking it to the rear. It's a very common thing. So if you're saying this is how you save your life and it's the first step is doing something you're not good at and you have difficulty with, then maybe that's not a great way to clear a malfunction. But you'll be surprised at how many manuals and how many tactical instructors will say, first step, lock your slide to the rear. So let's do it. Lock the slide to the rear. Then you're going to remove the magazine. Now, a lot of times people will tell you to ditch the whole mag. Yeah, okay. If you're a, you know, if you're a Marine or you're a cop, you might have plenty of extra rounds on your body. You're a citizen carrying a single stack nine with maybe one extra mag or no extra mags, you don't ditch your whole magazine. You want to retain it. Now, when I took that mag out, my malfunction just got cleared. The dummy round fell out all on its own. And that's very common. But what you should also do is cycle it. People will say, do it three times. Then reinsert your magazine, cycle, and then you can shoot. That's kind of a long process, right? Let me show you how fast it is to do in real time. I will set this back up and I'll do a as fast as I can double feed clear and you get to watch it and see how I do. Okay, so here we go. Textbook double feed clear. I have my double feed. I'm gonna come out. Here we go. I'm gonna try shooting first because that's how you'd realize. That is fast. I felt like I was going relatively fast on that. You could probably see how many seconds it took. So that's one way to clear a double feed. Standing still for all that in a gunfight, bad idea. I should have been off to the races to try to keep myself alive. The next way to clear a double feed, which I have found more success with most of my students, because again, that locking the slides through it can be difficult. I come out, I try to shoot, it doesn't work. Maybe I try a tap cycle, it doesn't work. So now I notice that I have a double feed. Instead of locking the slide to the rear, I'm just gonna rip the mag out, and this can be difficult, but I think it's less difficult than locking the slide to the rear. So I'm gonna hit my mag release and pull that mag out. It will be difficult. And you can see that was hard. Now what that did is that sent the slide forward on that dummy round. So now that dummy round should have been caught and now it should come out. Now what I can do is I have a couple options here depending on how good your hands were. The best way to do it is to now pull your slide to the rear. There goes my bad round. Then I put my new mag in, cycle it, and I can shoot. What also can happen is instead of cycling, I pulled that mag out, it allowed the slide to go forward, and I immediately put it back. Then I do this and I can shoot. 
people are going to tell you one way is better than the other and they're basing it on what they've seen what they've heard what they read about and I'm not in total disagreement that one way might be better than the other but what what you have to remember is you are an individual and you and your hands and your relationship with your gun matter more than my or some other instructor's opinion saying you got to do it this way if your hands work better and you find that you're much smoother and that your hand strength is much better by doing it one way more than another way i would say you do it that way because as a as a military instructor as a police instructor i don't deal with nearly as many hand strength issues as i have as a civilian instructor for the last 12 years i've dealt with many elderly students many small even smaller than staff female students you run into more problems when dealing with a wider variety of people and you have to come up with more solutions and i say do what works best for you as long as you know how to clear the malfunction and you can do it you've practiced it you can do it then do it do it the best way that your hands allow you to do it let me show you how fast that style of clear is in real time okay so here we are i've created a double feed and now i'm just going to do the magazine rip method here we go I find it to be about twice as fast. So you decide on what works. And there's a couple different ways you could do it, but you decide on what works best for you. As long as you know how to clear a double feed, I'm happy. Let's talk about another type of malfunction. Nowhere near as common with a standard, straight out of the box, factory self-defense handgun, but super common with people who do aftermarket triggers. And I'm not saying don't do an aftermarket trigger. Stavrula has an Apex tactical trigger kit in her shield, and it has proven her to be an outstanding trigger, super reliable. However, some aftermarket triggers are deliberately designed for self-defense situations, tactical situations, and some triggers are deliberately designed for you to go win a competition. I would never recommend anybody put a competition trigger in their self-defense handgun but a lot of people do because they simply have just never properly learned how to pull the trigger, really. So that handicap they want to solve, they, they want to be able to still hit really well, so they put in an ultralight competition trigger. And the thing is, in the competitive world, if your gun goes click instead of bang, you might not win the trophy. But in the real life world, you might die. So I wouldn't do that. This is a full cartridge. It's a nine millimeter cartridge. And what it's made up of is a brass casing, an actual bullet, powder inside the casing, and then a primer in the back, and that's in the middle. When you pull the trigger on your gun, a firing pin hits that primer and makes that dent. That primer sends a pretty significant spark into the casing where all the gunpowder is held. Gunpowder lights on fire and burns at an extremely fast rate, creates expanding gases, and pushes the bullet down your barrel. That's a real down and dirty about how these things work. If your firing pin or your striker hits that primer and does not hit it hard enough, the gun goes click and not bang. A simple solution is probably tap, cycle, and then to shoot again. But if you have those, if you're at the range, because you got that aftermarket trigger and you got that like $300 competition trigger and you're thinking about putting it in your self-defense gun, and every once in a while you get a light strike or you get a, a click instead of a bang, find that bullet, find that casing, that cartridge, and look at it. And if the dent is very minor compared to like a factory primer strike, think twice about doing that because you're not giving yourself the reliability or figure out the lightest and most reliable primers, whether it be Federal or Winchester for your caliber, CCI, something like that, and make sure you're shooting really good ammunition because light strikes go click instead of bang. Very easy problem to identify when you're at the range, your gun didn't go bang, find your bullet. If it's just barely dinged, you know you got light strikes get rid of that trigger. The other reason why that might happen is when you clean your firearm, you should always clean it muzzle down. When you get a when you get a, a brush and you're cleaning the front, the face of your bolt, so many people, and, and they take it apart first, but so many people will put that all-purpose brush in here and run it back and forth with like hoppies or some type of cleaning solution, and all the grease and crap fall into your firing pin hole. And then it's coated in garbage. So now your firing pin, you pull trigger, it goes, it goes forward so slow. It doesn't go forward crisp and clean. And you cause your gun to, to screw up. Always clean the face of your bolt 
facing down. Your brush should be bristles up when you're cleaning the face of your bolt. I can't tell you how many times I've had to do maintenance on almost always police officers' guns that have this problem. And they just put the brush down, they're cleaning like this, and I can always tell they clean their gun wrong because I can see how much sludge is inside their firing pin area, and it's just not okay. Muzzle down, brushes up, cleaning the face of your bolt. That's how you do that. That way you don't screw up your firing pin and create light strikes, even when your gun should never create light strikes. One more malfunction to go over with you is a failure to extract. This kind of develops itself into two separate ways. One way is that the gun will go click, or it might not even click at all, because it never, when you fired it, you might have had a squib load, which is like a whole other conversation. We should probably talk about squibs at some point. But basically, when you try to pull the slide to the rear, you can't do it. There's been some type of expansion inside your chamber that has locked your casing into the chamber and you physically cannot pull that slide to the rear. It's just not gonna go. You are trying like crazy and it's a no-go. It's not coming to the rear. That's kind of one of those things that really gets the hackles up on a lot of people's necks because they don't know if it's loaded, they don't know if it's unloaded, they know there's something wrong with the gun, they can't get their slide to the rear. Now, how do I get that? How do I fix that? Generally, I would say have someone with a lot of experience fix that. And usually what you can do is you can kind of find an edge on your gun if you can come over here and this is one of those things you want to be real careful you're pointing your gun in a safe direction where you might have to like find the edge and then push all your weight to push that slide open and open that thing up uh and then if you know your fingers off the trigger and you want to like use the end or sometimes you know people i've i've seen people use all sorts of di different types of methods you might even uh, depending on how you feel about your rear sight you might catch your <laughs> rear sight on something and then two hands like really power that down and open that thing up but truthfully, that might be something you want to do way offline, maybe not right there in the range, maybe not even behind the range. That's, that's, a, that's a trouble one. Crappy ammo will do that to you. Old steel case ammo, that'll do it to you. I guarantee you, you shoot steel case, you'll have one of those. Um, but sometimes even old crappy brass ammo can do that to you. The other thing is it's just a flat out failure to extract because the shoulders of the rim of the cartridge, the rim, see the rim? The shoulders are not grabbing. Your extractor might be broken. It's just not grabbing the rim and you're pulling it out and there's just up, there's a bullet or there's a casing jammed in your barrel and it's not. No matter how many times you cycle it, it's not ejecting that thing. Real simple for that is to just lock your slide to the rear. So you would lock it to the rear like this. You can still see that there's a casing in there. And again, this isn't great. Like there's not a lot of ways to this. If you can see that the primer has been dented and you feel like the weapon has already fired, you should feel more confident about this. If you can see that the primer has not been dented and you don't know if the weapon's been fired, best to have a professional do it. Otherwise, you can just get a punch rod or even a pencil and you can just blast that out there and it'll lock the, it'll knock the casing out. And then you can look at the casing or you can look at your, ex, your, eject, your extractor and see what the problem is. If you try shooting again and you run into this a bunch of times, it's probably your extractor. If you just had one, it's probably a bad, a bad rim on the cartridge but that's how you can get those out. Be super careful when dealing with those difficult malfunctions. Don't at all be even remotely shy about saying, hey, I have kind of an abnormal malfunction. I have a failure to extract. I have a round of ammunition, fired or unfired, and it's in my chamber and I can't get it out. And there's a lot of people at any range that are gonna be real confident with how to fix that. If you're kind of new, ask someone. And I've, I've never been like, I can't believe that guy or that girl asked me to do that. I've always been like, absolutely, let me do that for you. And, and I can usually fix it. Those are your most common forms of malfunctions. I hope you don't have a malfunction that we haven't talked about, but I'm, there's, there's, there's more out there. There's definitely more out there. But I feel like we kind of just beat up a bunch of them. So I hope you got something out of this. And I'm sure Stav will tell you more about that as we go. I hope watching this was helpful for you guys. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Mac. I love bringing him into my videos because I know he's such a great resource for you guys. He's one of my favorite instructors. Maybe I'm a little biased, but he's just, he's wicked smart and he knows his stuff and I love having him in my videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I know you've said in your comments that you like seeing him in my videos. So he'll be in a lot more. So make sure you subscribe so you can see more of him and more of me. I'm actually getting a P.O. box right now because some of you have asked me if I have one so you can send me mail and stuff. So I'm going to put that information down below in case you want to send me any letters. I'd love to hear from you guys that way. And I hope you all have a great day and stay safe. Bye!